Welcome to Home Cinema and Tech Review. In this video, I'd like to talk about why the projector is better than a TV. Hold on. When I say it like this, you probably think, hey, you probably haven't seen mini LED, QLED, or OLED kind of like uh, ideas will probably pop up into your head. I know. I probably watched all of these TV models that you probably are going to imagine in your head. But have you seen something like this? This is in the echo mode and right now the room is bright and you can clearly see me. And I will put my projector into from echo mode to dynamic mode. Take a look at this. Have you ever seen something like this? This is 92 inch Vivid Storm ALR screen. And this is not the first video you'll be probably watched uh, in my channel. Like I have probably over a thousand of videos. Uh, so I will tell, try to tell why the projector is better than a TV and when. And I will shoot another video when the TV might be better because I'm only focused on the projectors after realizing the performance with the ALR screens over a long time use and I've sold my TV right now this is my TV setup and if you haven't watched my other videos and guides you can go back and watch them so why is the projector better option first thing is first no reflection this light is lighting me have you seen any reflections no do you see me reflecting because oh lens protection do you see me reflecting from the screen? No, because this is lighting me. I'm right now lit. I should be, you know, somehow reflected from the screen, but I'm not because this is ALR screen and it just prevents any kind of reflections. So that means you can use this screen while your uh, curtains are up and you won't be having a reflection from here. I can watch this video from here. This is kind of like a zero point and I don't see the reflections of that side of the room. Even if, if I open up the top lights, which I can't really watch TV, this reflection is a one thing for a big matter. If you're going to go above 85 inch, probably TV will be reflecting everything in the room. I know some TVs have matte finishes, but many of the big TVs above 75 to 85 inch just prefers glossy finish because it's about better blacks as we know it. So what's another positive of the projector against the TV? Second thing is, the, of course, not the reflections, but the size. I, I didn't want to mention the size because it's obvious. Like this is 92 inch and you can buy 120 inch ALR screen from Rise Up, but you can go 150 uh, from roll down kind of like screens for long throw projectors. This is ultra short throw, probably way better option for daily uh, use of, uh, let's just say, general rooms of the house not a dedicated cinema room because sometimes you if you need to you know install the long throw projector up top or some some something like bookshelf it's not probably it might not be ideal for living room of the house but ultra short throws mostly suits many of the living living room setups like my home as you can see so the size is important because if you go above 75 and uh, above like 70, 80, 75, 85, 98 and above, you're going to increase the price dramatically. So some people might say that you can buy cheaper 4K uh, mini LED or QLED TV models. And yes, you are right. You can buy them but they are they are going to be with their own downsides okay i'm i'm going to mention all of these downs potential downsides and you will realize the subject how cool is to have a projector i'm not against the tvs by the way but i just prefer projectors after i just realized how good that they could be because you're not going to be stacking up with only one size i made a dedicated video if I move forward this projector, 
I will get about 75 inch and I will increase the sharpness huge. And if I get it back and close the screen, I will get a second. And I also have the screen so I can go back and forth, create four different probably size for same projector. So I can use it 65, 75 TV size with extremely brighter uh, quality just like an LCD or a mini LED QLED style if I have a proper projector. If you go cheap of course the brightness and the image quality will get low like anything else but I get a couple of sizes and no TV can catch 150 inch without like couple of panels or even if it's a single unit how are you going to install it in your house? How will they get into your house in the first place? So and the size is obvious advantage. Let me just show you by closing the ALR screen how it fails to perform without the ALR screen in a lit environment. Can you see how washed out the image is? So of course the ALR screen brings a lot of things to the table. But what if I close the room lights? Let me just close it. Right now this room is dimly lit room okay kind of like dimly lit so you won't be having a big problem but as you can see image is still washed out this is not its darkest room still i can read books in this light setup and i have my video light here as you can see so you can clearly see size difference this is 92 and maybe even the corners this is maybe 91 90 but this is a 92 inch alr screen and at the back i have 110 and if I close this, okay, if I get it a little bit back, it's difficult to get it back because this is a heavy projector. But still, if I move it a couple of inches and voila, right now, I know it's not perfect, but probably screen is increased and you wouldn't be catching inside of this video. We just expand extremely. So even this could be watchable if you have a proper good projector like this. And I'm going to review this projector later on. This is one of my favorites. And I'm right now using it on a daily basis. Let me just get it close as much as possible. Still screen is big. I'm going to open up the room lights and you're going to see a washed out image. Okay, I'm going to get back. This is a washed out image. And this is a proper TV style image, brightness levels. And I want to get it a little close to fill the screen as much as possible. It's not going to be perfect. Don't focus on my placement yet. Just I need to go a little forward maybe. Yes, I'm doing it on the fly, so it won't be perfect. But what have we learned? So you will have a couple of sizes that no TV can give it to you. That's another plus on the size of things. One more thing is this projector is full HD but you wouldn't recognize it because it's extremely big and you have to sit a little bit back so you're not going to be pixel peeping and the resolution is not everything in the picture so sometimes size and most of the time for me the cinema just takes you in. So if you go short and get 65 inch or 75 inch TV size and if you want to enjoy cinema style you can go big as many times as you want as much as you want so this gives the advantage of real life size characters of movies and as you can see uh, not just movies but also PlayStation like a console or PC style gameplay you can clearly enjoy the big picture quality it's something else picture will swallow you just gets you inside of the situation and if you if you're onto football and matches and stuff no tv i know tvs are sometimes brighter but can give you the huge size effect like you're going to feel the same level of you're in a stadium kind of like quality with the projectors so one more thing have you ever thought moving a big tv how many guys do you need have you ever just tried to pull up a TV from a wall unit? Let's just think about it. My earlier TV was 65 inch Philips and it, wa it was a pretty good TV with a subwoofer inside and it has its own soundbar. It had it. 
So I couldn't manage to pull it out from the wall just for my, with myself and my wife just helped me out. But when I tried to move it to the second owner that I sold, my Passat station wagon or Audi A4 station wagon couldn't handle it properly. So it was a hassle to get it in without hurting the TV. So we just wrapped it around a couple of times and just move it around from one corner to another corner and two person to hold it inside of a car, rolling it in was awful. So if you ever decide to sell a TV, it's extremely difficult than a selling a projector. This could get any side of box, okay? Without the box, you can just wrap it up and give it to the next owner. It's quite easy. So the second and maybe even third thing is the, of course, movability if you want to sell outside of your home. One more thing, these things are far less heavy than a big TV. And also, what big TVs are failing is the protection. If your screen size increases, also the fred it, they become much more vulnerable of any kind of touch or hit from any item, okay? This is a protection, don't worry. So if you have small kids that's uh, like the poke around the screen, any kind of touch could kill your 98 inch or 100 inch and above TV. So if you want to add a protective layer, like a plexiglass probably, I did review in my early videos, I still do have for my second kid room setup, 43 inch TV with a plexiglass protection layer. And my kid just hits it like a pretty good for cracking purposes, like purposefully she hits it, but she couldn't manage to hit the TV. But if your TV just increased huge, no protection layer could protect from center attacks because when your TV is get, getting bigger, your protection plexi layer will be only connecting from up top or the side uh, let's just say uh, side frames. Nowadays, new TVs doesn't even have a proper thick frames because of frameless design. So the protection layer will be just touching around the corners. But what about the middle? If you hit it with anything, like a ball or anything, even those plexiglass might not protect your 98 inch TV. One more thing, 98 inch TVs or 100 inch TVs quite heavy. If you're not living in Europe, if you're living in America with wood walls or kind of like an empty space walls, not like a solid one like this, you can't put a couple of holes to hold it easily. So the installation progr pro uh, progress is going to be difficult. So you need help. And for 98 inch and above, you at least need three people. Okay, to get the TV up and hanging on the wall. And when you also want to take it down and think about the box size, how many of you just keep the box of a TV? Because if you have a big TV like 75 and above, the box will be huge. So you probably wouldn't want to keep the box. First thing that you'll do, install the TV and get rid of the box. What if you want to sell it? How are you going to protectively sell it? No way. So there is no way to really changing your easy way to changing your TV. I know some of the things is just about the later actions of a TV purchase, but those things are happening. And for me, the protection is one of the most important things. If I have kids in the room, I just hit the button of going down from an ALR screen and my kid and my brother's kids could hit the wall with the ball, no problem. The visual will be on the wall. Wall is secure. You can't crack the wall, right, with the ball or anything for that matter. So this is far more reliable than a big TV when it comes down to the touches or hits from any kind of object. One more thing is also about the price. The price is, is going to be extremely low because the ultra short throw quality projectors is probably about three thousand to four thousand dollar level okay this is a full hd one and i'm quite happy with it the picture quality is great in my opinion considering the price of this thing this is epson ls 300 by the way so 
I love this device. Instead of my 4K 65 inch TV, I'm using it as a daily as a 92 or sometimes 85 if I want to get close because of my TV unit. My setup hasn't finished because I'm changing it all the time, but let's just face it. One thing is for real. If you want to buy a 85 and 98 inch TV, the prices will be very similar uh, with this combination. Mm -mm. Let's just say for entry level products. But if you want to buy something decent, compare against the proper projectors with the proper LC, uh, ALR screens like this, your price of the projector and screen combination will probably half and less than half compared to the TVs. And there are lot, lots of advantages like I told you in this video. So isn't there any bad side? Uh, there are a couple of bad sides, but probably I will make another video when the TV is usable. But for me, it's actually projector. One thing is for sure, you might be probably saying in your mind, hey, like the latency or the Hertz levels or the, pro the greatest black of OLED, QLED or AMOLED, whatever the technology is, even the plasma, old ones. You might be thinking about the still black levels in your head. Yes, but most of the time, the size and the overall quality will swallow you and big picture is something else. And when you can get close and create a TV size, your brightness and the contrast increase huge amounts. So you wouldn't be regretting your choice of projector and the screen combination against the TV probably. Once you buy it, you will be probably thanking me. But in case of like you are really focused guy and you are designer, you are color grading, you might be looking on OLED TV, but the proper OLED TV with this size will way past probably anyone's budget. Like if you're really having the budget, then there is no way to disagree with you. Like you can go OLED, but think about the disadvantages. You're not going to be moving it. And even the one thing is not the sale of a TV, okay? Like seven, second hand, you might not be thinking about selling it ever. But then one thing is for sure. What if you change the room setup? Like what if you and your wife just decide to change the living room setup, change the furniture? You can just take it, close it, take it, and put it around somewhere else in the same room. You can change the same room setup easy as it is but most of the time you're going to have to stuck with uh, your choice of tv placement when it comes down to the uh, you know choosing the furniture that's one of the bad things about the tvs like you have to put place the tv first and the rest of the furniture will have to follow your choice of big screen but in that no you can move it around whatever however you like so the flexibility of the screen and the projector combination. One more thing comes to my mind is also about the projectors against the TVs is this screen will be long-term investment. Like when you buy an ALR screen, it will be like a furniture, okay? You can use it probably around 30 years if you're not going to put holes in it, okay? If you're not going to put it outside and under the sun, kind of stuff, this won't be changing its look. So how is that going to affect you? Every TV will have a life cycle, right? Every also projector have a life cycle. Like after five or eight years, if you're into cinema and technology, you will probably want to change your TV, like with the resolutions, with the brightness and contrast, everything changes in time. So it's going to be far more easy to change the projector and this will be your overall long time investment. I know these things are not going to be extremely cheap when you have to buy two of them, but you can also buy an ultra short throw and wait a while and get a projector screen. And I did in early in my videos, I showed you, you can create a similar image with a cheaper projector, like a long throw projector and long throw ALR screen combination. So you have to know which kind of setup you have and what kind of living space that you imagine. Like you can either go for long throw in my early options or short throw in my new videos. So it's up to you. But once you use a projector, 
with a good screen, with a good projector, I guess probably you're not going to regret it and you're not going to be able to return back to a TV. I'm not against the TVs, but you have to uh, experience it in the real life. I'm trying my best to show you as much as possible. Just know this. If you haven't driven a bike like motorcycle, you don't know how it feels like, okay? If you haven't been in a helicopter, you don't know how it feels like. If you haven't driven a cabriolet car, if you just driven a coupes or just four-door regular cars, you wouldn't understand a person that drives cabriolet or sports car. This is how it feels like. Like if you haven't tried a proper projector setup or just seen it alive, I'm just trying to show you as much as possible, as real as possible. So you wouldn't really understand until you tried it so. So your first projector might not be the best projector, but once you do buy a good projector and a good screen combination, I guess you're not going to go back ever. I'm not talking about never using a TV again. You might be using a TV, but you could probably go to a direction like, hey, we're, if you're going to two TVs in the same house, well, I'm going to just skip the one TV and one will be just projector and screen setup. Because you're going to think like that, like, hey, I'm going to buy a regular TV or just a 4K, 55, 65, whatever you can afford. And the second one will be, even the full HD projector will impress you a lot. Just bear with me. You don't have to go the 4K just because you have the 4K TV. And I made a dedicated video. All the, these topics will be in the end of the video around the corners. Don't skip them. Just watch them because I show you on the, on those videos. Do you really need the 4K? Because you're going to go back and you're not going to be pixel peeping. And even the good full HD long throw cheaper projectors, definitely in the second hand market will impress you a lot. Just have to combine it with a good screen. If you're going to use it in a dim lit or something like lit room like this, you have to choose the right screen and the right projector combination. And I'm here to help in the channel. Don't forget to subscribe, like the videos. If you learn anything from my videos, just say hi because YouTube love comments and this channel has to grow. I'm putting a lot of effort for this channel. This is my hobby channel. I'm not probably getting paid 90% of the videos. Some of the sponsors just send a couple of products, but it's difficult to buy every single projector. So if the channel grows, I just invest as much as I can. I try different hardware and let you know if it's going to suit your setup. And ask questions as much as possible. Sometimes your questions becomes my tutorials and my guides. Hopefully, see you in the next video. Home Cinema and Tech Review. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Bye.